Chris the Bergeron zone. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Hello. Thank you for coming today, um, and uh, welcome to Senator Spilka's event. We, I am, my name is Arthur Bergeron. I'm an attorney at Myrick O'Connell. Um, some of you folks have met me before. Um, we do uh, a whole bunch of things. There are 65 of us. I am the elder law person, and that's all that I do. Um, but as many of you folks know, my, my sense of what elder law is is really about helping you understand not just some legal issues, but a whole variety of issues that might be related to you, and one of them is trying to figure out how you can stay home. My, my, clients, uh, my clients are them. Frank and Mary are my typical client, and they are, they've got a house that's worth about $300,000. They've got an IRA, they've got a bank account, so they've got total money of about $600,000. They've, they've got total assets of $600,000. They don't have a lot of extra cash. Um, he has an income of $2,500 uh, a month. She has an income of $750 a month. Um, um, excuse me, he has an income of $2,000 a month, $1,500 from Social Security and $500 from a pension. Uh, her income is half of his, $750 from Social Security. They're going to do okay. Uh, they've got almost $3,000 a month in income, but they've got their mortgage paid. They're going to survive um, as long as no medical disaster occurs. But their goal really in life is they want to stay home. Uh, they want to die and be buried in the backyard. The question is, how can they do that? Now, a piece of that is making sure that that home changes over time to be safe, even though their physical condition is changing, right? So I wanted to really talk to you about the kinds of, trem the tremendous number of things that you can do to make that home safer. Um, and that's why I've asked um, Carol DiRienzo to come. Carol is a, a nurse. We always show you first to herself as the nurse carpenter. Um, she and her husband do this kind of work helping people figure out adaptations to their home that can make it safer. Then the question, though, is if you're Frank and Mary, well, that's all great, you know, but how do you pay for it? Well, um, I never recommend um, reverse mortgages to people. Or I shouldn't say never. I almost never recommend reverse mortgages. I never recommend them when you're young or for purposes of maintaining your lifestyle. But in terms of keeping your home safe so that you can stay here at, while not dipping into kind of limited other resources, a reverse mortgage may be ideal. So Steve Greenberg is going to talk about reverse mortgages. Christina Cutting from, uh, the, from SMOC, the South Middlesex Opportunity Council, is going to talk specifically about what is in some ways really a reverse mortgage that is provided to you by the state uh, for up to $30,000 to do just this kind of work, work that is adapting your home. Um, so hopefully you'll find all of that interesting. Um, first of all, Carol DiRienzo. Thank you, Arthur. So how are we going to get Frank and Mary to age in place? Does anybody know what aging in place is? That's this new term that's out there that wants you to be able to stay in your home safer and more comfortably. Now it starts when you're a baby and you move into a home with your parents. They do all those great little things. They put covers on the outlets, they put baby gates up and corner guards and now monitors that can watch your every move. And as you get older, there's now parental controls to monitor the TV, your cell phone and your computers. But all of a sudden, things stop. But you keep growing. So how do we help you age in place? Do we tear down your home? No, we don't want to tear down your home. You have a beautiful home. But we make a range of practical modifications along the way to help you live in your home more comfortably and more safely for as long as possible. So what are the tools that we use to help you do that? One of them is called universal design. And you have in your packet one of these. And what is universal design? Universal design is the concept of designing all product and space to be usable by the most people possible, regardless of your ability, your age, or your social status. If you look through, it's become creeping into our environment, universally designed products. You go to Walmart, the door's open for you. You just have to walk in. You can walk in whether you're on, in a wheelchair, whether you're a two-year-old, or you're a 102-year-old. 
a garage door opener, one of the first products out there that were universally designed. You click the button, the garage door goes up. You click the button, the garage door goes down, and it has a safety device to it, those little eyes on either side. So if the garage door is coming down and your dog and your little toddler is running through it, it automatically stops it. That's part of the universally designed product. My most favorite one is a lever handle. We'll talk about them more later. But you can use a lever handle, any body part. I've used, had packages in my hand and have used my back end to open up my door. I've used my elbows, my chin, even my foot when I really couldn't do anything else. I could open my door regardless. So what are some of the obstacles that come to you as you're trying to age in place in your home? If we look at four spots, can you get into your home easily and safely? And then if you're like me, can you get to the bathroom right away? Can you get to your bedroom for a nice, safe, comfortable sleep? And then can you use your kitchen? So those are the four areas that we concentrate on. So can you get into your home? What are some of the minor things that you can do to help you get into your home? Change the location of your door. Some, you, maybe your front door has six stairs, but maybe your side door only has one or two. So make that your front door. Oops. Oh, sorry. Can you re-landscape? When I came home from the hospital after having back surgery, which has kind of started me on this path, I pulled up and I realized I have 12 stairs to get into my house. I was in a, in a, on a walker. How could I do that? I was lucky enough to be married to a contractor, and so we made some minor modifications to our front that allowed me to be able to get in. <coughs> Another important thing is making sure you have a bright light so you can see. <coughs> Major changes. When just doing minor ones don't work, what are some of the things that are offered to, to you? Ramps. This is a fixed ramp made with wood. Looks very beautiful. This is a modular ramp. You can put it almost anywhere, and it can be removed when you're finished using it. If ramps don't work, what are some of the other options? They now make chair lifts for outside. There's also a wheelchair lift, or you can purchase a portable lift that you can take with you anywhere. All right, you get up the stairs, and can you get in your front door? One of the first things we want to look at is to make sure your front door is 34 to 36 inches wide, because that'll give you the ability, whether you have an assisted device or another person helping you, so that both of you can get through the door. Talked about those lever handles before. How do you turn that front door? Very hard and sometimes very difficult when you have arthritis. This is an adaptation that you can put on by yourself. It adapts a round knob to a lever handle. Nowadays, they're also making ones that you don't even need a key to get in, <coughs> although there's a key backup. You punch in a code, you put on your lever handle, and you're in your door. And we were talking about automatic door openers before. They're now made for residential use. So you press a button, and your door can now open automatically. They also have them for your back sliders as well. And some of them work on the same principle as a garage door opener. <coughs> OK. You're in the house, now you gotta get to the bathroom. Can you get in? Can you get into your bathroom? Most bathroom doors are only 24 to 28 inches wide. A wheelchair, assistive device, a scooter, it's not gonna get you in. So the number one modification that we do is widening a door. Oftentimes we use pocket doors when we can to try to get in. There's some other doors I'll show you later, adaptations. And also, we try to make it a zero clearance so you don't have a step, a threshold step to get in. Floors. People don't think about their <laughs> bathroom floors, but they're very slippery. So what are some of the things that we can use? Slip-resistant tile for those people who really like tile. Vinyl. Vinyl tiles now, the ones that you used to see in the hospital, are made in a great variety of colors. They're made to look like wood. They're made to look like stone. You can get them in a variety of shapes and sizes. And a new product out there now is rubber. Rubber floorings are becoming very, very popular. They come in a variety of colors as well. All right, can you get to your toilet? I don't know about you, but our toilets used to be very, 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 very low. <laughs> and you can get down. <laughs> I, it was, but it was even low for me. You can get down, but can you get back up sometimes? So there are some assisted devices that you can purchase, moderately priced, 
that will help you. There's a toilet seat razor. There's one that actually eject you off when needed. Or you can buy what's now called a comfort height toilet. And they measure the distance between your knee to your ankle, and they find the best height toilet for you. Some of the other things in a bathroom that you can use. Some people find it very hard to flip that little lever. Sometimes it's embedded really in close into the toilet. So they make lever extensions. And if your hands are not feeling good, they make a foot pedal. Much easier to flush with your foot than it is sometimes with your hand. And some of the things we greatly, greatly look for is lighting your toilet area. Because in the night, and the pathway to get there as well, if your kitty cat or your dog is in your way, you don't want to be tripping over them on your way to the bathroom. So if you have a nice lighted pathway, it'll enhance your safety. Okay, bathrooms. Bathtubs, which I'll show you in a minute, but a lot of times we take bathtubs out and put in roll-in showers, either ones that have a very, very low threshold or ones that have no threshold at all. You can get in with one person or two pe people. You can get in with a scooter. You can get in with a wheelchair, as well as we put in special drains so the water doesn't come out onto the floor. We also want to put in controls that are easy to use. A handheld is a wonderful adaptation into a shower because wherever you are, you can be seated on a bench and you can shower yourself. Temperature controls. You set a temperature and when the water turns on, it comes just to that temperature. Every time, all the time. And then anti-scald devices because as we all know, as we get older, our, th our skin becomes much, much thinner and we don't want to burn. So an anti-scald device will help prevent that. 